Hello everyone, welcome back to Cartoon Fanbase. I'm Wisekid and I'm here with Aiden from Cartoon Apocalypse and the virtual celebrity. Hi. Oh, I guess we're supposed to say something. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> I've never done an intro before, okay? And then we're also here with MK Griffin. Mia? Yeah, I said hi! <laughs> yeah, oh my god, okay. So today, we're going to be rewriting Miraculous Ladybug. So we will talk about some of the problems and then we'll move on to how we can fix them, but also plan out the characters and the general, the general plan for everything. And then we'll go on from there. So Mia has a big list of things so I think we should touch on those things first. Sounds good to me. So mm -hmm. what's the first thing you wrote, Mia, if you're on the list? I had to address this because it still makes me mad to this day. Finales such as season two, not making any impact on any of the characters. <laughs> because I, I loved season two and the finale of it was like a great way to wrap it up in my opinion, but it did nothing. It, we went straight into Chameleon and we had no mention. No mention at all what happened that day. I think that's a bigger... There's a bigger issue tied to that and that would be the continuity issue. It's just the episodes, they don't really matter in the grand scheme of things. I mean, you have like... Yeah. Typically, you can, yeah. Have, you can have the finale and you can have the first episode. Yeah, but Outside of that, that, anything that happens is pretty much erased. And I think that's like <laughs> the, the biggest issue is that there's just no continuity like like nothing really sticks outside of the first and the last episode which i mean i guess the season two finale uh, with with it not really affecting anything that's a whole other sort of side to that where they just they don't move fast enough the plots just like <laughs> it took two seasons to to finally introduce some new heroes which we knew existed or did we know it existed? I don't. I don't remember back in season one, but it took so miraculous. long just to, to just to get started with the plot. It feels like so. I feel like yeah, yeah, really. yeah. I feel like they could have done that with season two and season three because it was just beginning and ends of seasons. But and I think they knew what they were doing, like when they had um, Marinette kiss Adrian on the cheek. Like, for the French people, that was normal. Because that's just how they interact. And I think they did that on purpose because they knew the foreigners would think it's something bigger. Oh, oh my god. The amount of people in my comments are like, did the kiss not mean anything? And I'm like, that's what they do over there. And people are like, no, but she kissed him on the cheek. It should do something. And I was like, it doesn't. And so many people have put so much <laughs> emphasis on that kiss that... Almost to the end of season three, people were still bringing it up as a sore spot. Like, I guess the kiss didn't matter. And I was like, yeah, it didn't. It took you a while. <laughs> I think what really, like, stood out to me, like, with the kiss is because, like, I knew it was a French greeting. But the way it was, the way it was structured, it was only one side. Usually when they do that in the show, and I'm, I'm not sure if they still, like, in real life that they do this, but it's, like, on both sides. When it comes to the love square, pentagon, triangle, hexagon, <laughs> circle... Do it, decimagon. <laughs> yeah, like, what has progressed? Like, they introduced Kagami and Luka, and they've had, like, moments, but, um, like, I don't think... So far, well, we, we see the promo for S4, but, like, in the three seasons, it hasn't progressed, like, except for them being introduced. Maybe in and season three, a few things with Kagami and Luka, some seeds, but not that much. I was just going to say, uh, I, I sort of disagree with, with the fact that, it, that nothing has changed. Fundamentally, no, but um, the relationship between Marinette and Adrian has definitely improved because at the start of season one, when they were first introduced, um, Marinette just could not hold us like a conversation with Adrian <laughs> at all. Okay, yeah, that's true. <laughs> season two, it got better. I mean, she was still you know fumbling and stuff, but you know it got better. And then season three, she you know they they are good friends now, and Marinette can actually talk to Adrian, and it's not as awkward. But then I the mean, thing is, there are episodes where their memory is just wiped. And for some reason, oh Marinette's just like, a Adrian. 
you know? <laughs> Mm -hmm. that, that's another point I brought up here in this list was whenever there is some type of progression within this love pentagon, the memories get wiped automatically, and there's literally no point in the episode. Yeah, Oblivio was the most painful episode because oh. it's everything the <laughs> fandom wanted, but the show said no. I love and hate Jeez. that episode to equal. They've degrees. done so like, many episodes like that. They, they, they did that with Cat Blanc as well. Like, I still haven't watched Cat Blanc in English. <gasps> like, my emotions can't handle it. I was destroyed the first time I, I watched it. <laughs> oh my god. Because it's just not fair at this point. The show creators, they, I think they realize the fandom is getting tired because we've seen this relationship thing be dragged out and it really destroyed star versus so i guess the show is like oh we don't want to end up like that so let's kind of show the relationship but not really so we can't be held accountable for anything and the thing is the show is becoming so popular that i'm scared it, they're gonna give it more and more seasons until it just gets dragged out like i'm oh. just imagining season 10 the reveal finally happens, uh, <laughs> you know? If that's, if that's what happens, no. If they bring out more seasons, I want to see after the reveal. I want to see them grown up. I want to see Yeah, them they, they yeah. introduce the future. Yeah, yeah, true. They better true. not drag it out like that, because I will be mad, and I, it was just not. Because, like, story-wise, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Like, I remember in, when both the virtual celebrity and Aiden when Aiden was reviewing the first promo that came out with like Master Fu coming on the train and you straight up told us it was bad storytelling the amount of times I kept trying to point that out to everyone who watched that promo is great yeah it would be bad storytelling to bring him back that is something i wrote like he just left why bring yeah. him i back? know and th they were trying to make it such an emotional moment like as i said like a few minutes before you joined a year back they were like the season three finale is gonna be so emotional so get your tissue boxes prepare yourself for tears Okay, they made it emotional. They could have made it more emotional, but they made it emotional. Master Fu, bye bye. But then he just came back the episode mm -hmm. after, or like yeah. a few episodes after. Like the audacity. If he, does, if he does come back, I want it not to be him, but I forgot the woman's name. Um, like his Marianne? name. Marion? Marion? Marion, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. I want her and Marinette to have contact with, no like, with one another because she also had knowledge of the miraculous and I feel like she would be great advice but not Master Fu let, let, let him have his let, let him have his life now, please yeah, just leave him alone leave the old man alone already <laughs> like yeah, like before I even got on here, I was actually making my um, Shanghai live reaction video so I... I just I just saw all the characters and I was like Miraculous is able to put like more than five characters in a sh in in a show because this show is allergic to introducing new characters. Is that just me? Wait, Shanghai is out. Yeah, like the, the um the trailer. Yeah. The trailer. Oh yeah, my god. Trailer. Okay, okay. I was about to faint. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> I spent so long oh trying god, to decide god. on a thumbnail because <sighs> um. I I don't want to spoil anything, but at the same time, it's like the fandom is tired. We're tired of seeing Marinette and Adrian's face. Everybody can predict what would happen just from seeing trailers now because this show is so repetitive and it's so frustrating because it could be so good. There's so many interesting ways they could take it. Oh, yeah. Which is sort of the whole point of uh, this this video, isn't it? To, it to is. see To tell what's wrong with it and then say <laughs> what we can do to fix it. Well, yeah. We need to fix it. We need to yeah, and then up. get blocked by Thomas on Twitter. Oh God, <laughs> I haven't had to deal with that before, but I know, I know, TVC. That man is so petty. Oh my God. Oh. Uh, I always guess I loved. I was one of the things as well, like Chloe's art, like her arc in the story. That's a big thing. A yeah. What happened? Yeah. It was so like her arc in the story in season two, like the queen's battle. It actually felt like they were going somewhere with it. Yeah. Oh my oh. god, they hyped that battle to hell and back <laughs> for it to just be <clears throat> just all of it out the window. And oh my, yeah, that's so sad. Like Chloe, like even though she's like, mm, 
Like, but still, she she deserves it. Her and Adrian are probably the most interesting characters. Fight me. I will stand by that. <laughs> yeah, Chloe is interesting. Ad Adrian is literally the center of the show. I forgot who said that in my comments. I say Adrian is the show, he but is. the show refuses to follow him. Yeah, because they have to follow the sweet, quirky, shy girl. Right? Yeah. I guess the reason why is because, oh, Adrian is not relatable enough. He's too perfect. And I was like, yes, let me see the perfect the character. He got the backstory. Exactly. He got the exactly. backstory to, uh, to like help that all. And then with Chloe's arg, it mainly ended because Thomas just like didn't like her. If I were yeah, to I don't know what thing. is. What? <laughs> yeah, he hyped it up. He hyped it up so much as well. He was like, yeah, like Chloe's gonna get a redemption arc. No. Psych. <laughs> no, psych. <laughs> no redemption arc for Chloe. Like, I feel like the I only way she would get a redemption arc is if it ties into this new season, like with the new uh, Queen Bee. I had I had a good theory. I don't know. I, I got no evidence for it, but I got, I got a decent <laughs> uh, theory where it was just like, she has like a moment of reflection like she has all that power in her hands and she reflects on it and chooses not to i feel like that's the only way that they could pivot it into her having a redemption arc but once again that's all on thomas because obviously he ha he doesn't care the only person that can redeem chloe is chloe because ladybug yes. can't apparently yeah yeah but like ladybug did like show her a better way but then a ladybug did know. screw it up again because she gave kagami the miraculous so that was kind of shown oh it's kind of ladybug like the show has this way of blaming marinette but not really blaming her at the end of the day like it's her fault yes but she had good intentions like with that what's the name of that episode she ikari gozen ikari gozen i hate that episode i never hated marinette more than in that episode Oh, I'm oh glad you brought that up because I, I, okay, in this list I got, I, I separated it into characters, so I wrote down everything wrong <laughs> with each character, and, um, I don't try to slander, but she gets, she makes so many mistakes and decisions, <laughs> and she has no punishment for it. I- that frustrates me so much. I never got to watch Ikari Goes In very well because the only time I watched it was like when it came out at a panel or something in like not that well, good quality. But like, I'm pretty sure that's when Kagami oh, yeah, yeah. got the miraculous, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <sighs> that. Yeah, Marinette m makes so many mistakes. So many of the akumatizations are either a direct result or an indirect result of Marinette in some way. Or Ladybug. You know, the, 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 the simplest thing they could have done for Chloe yeah, was have be... her start to be nicer to, to the people around her a little bit. For Sabrina. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> yeah. The problem, Chloe could have... The reason why her redemption arc failed was actually because Ladybug did not give her the Miraculous back. Chloe was, was being good and she was waiting for the Miraculous, but she never got it, which is why she reverted back to her original self. Um, so had she gotten the Miraculous, she likely would have improved. The issue is that Ladybug was facing is she couldn't give the Miraculous back because Hawk Moth knew who she was, and Chloe by nature is just a susceptible character to negativity. So by giving the Miraculous back to Chloe, that increases the risk that she will be akumatized uh, with the Miraculous, which is obviously a very dangerous thing. So there was a big dilemma there, and I think at the end of the day, I think they Ladybug made the right decision by not giving um, Chloe the Miraculous just because... Chloe, I don't know. That's just the way that Thomas, Chloe, or Thomas obviously does not like Chloe. I don't care where the writers go with the show, as long as they're consistent. <laughs> I didn't like um, the. Consistency is the key in the show, and they just right. It's it's like one of. Okay, <laughs> I'm not sure if you guys saw this tweet or I forgot what it was, but um, Thomas had actually claimed that like the New York special and the Shanghai special fit like two different things in the seat, like in between seasons 
What? And to me, that messed up the whole timeline. I was that actually kind of happy happens. that the New York special kind of worked with the timeline. Like, apparently, apparently it's like in the middle. Wait, 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 of... I'm confused. What? Can you run that by <laughs> me again? Um, basically, Thomas had done a tweet in response to like the New York special and the Shanghai special and where they fit in the timeline of the show. And I don't remember exactly okay. which season okay. it fit, okay. but the what I do remember is that the Shanghai special apparently fits in between season two and season three, and then the New York special fits between season three and like season four. Yeah, that's correct. Oh no! Oh no! And I'm just yeah. Like, why would you I actually a said this in my review. I was like, when does this take place? It doesn't make sense for a special. God damn it! What, what's with the season? scheduling of this show? Yeah, I, I feel like in season that's four they the thing. Have a random... has terrible. I don't know who. At yeah. this rate, we're gonna have the review before. Like we're gonna have the review before like season four comes out or something. The studio needs a rehaul. Like they need to collectively just redo things. And I feel like if going back to your point of one thing I could fix in the show, it would be the people who make the trailers. Because I think they're the ones most at fault because they create unnecessary hype and tension within the fandom for things that really shouldn't be that big of a deal. They make the trailer so different from what the episode actually is, and then the episode will air before anything else, and it's just so chaotic, and I hate it. That's sort of arguably that's that's sort of the point of the trailers is to hype the people up. <laughs> so I don't know. I think they're doing. I think it's they hype us in the wrong strategy. direction. They hype well, us in yeah, the wrong direction. <laughs> Their only goal is to get people to watch the episode. And if they get you hyped for any reason and they get you to watch that episode, they have accomplished their job. Season three did have some good episodes, though. Like, I really like the ones with Mayora. Do mm -hmm. you know how easy it is for them to just plop in any hero? Literally, they have so many options. <laughs> They can just plop in a hero and make oh. the episode more interesting than before. Yes. <laughs> you know, and they they didn't have to do the, the the second version of episodes like Stormy Weather two. The puppet that was here too. That was the most pointless episode I've ever seen. The only thing I liked about that episode was hearing Adrian's perspective on certain things. But that's it. But that's do you know what, really made, what made me mad about that episode in particular? They had a recap, right? In a show where continuity doesn't matter. <laughs> oh my god, that's so true. Why do you have a recap when continuity doesn't matter to you? Like, they didn't have a recap, but like they did it so awkwardly in like the middle of the season in a show that just doesn't follow any rules within the timeline. Thomas said that every episode in season four would be like, uh, season four would be like, um, Cat Blanc. Cat Blanc, yeah. But I just don't want to believe him anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to believe like, anything he says. I take, I take just, his opinion with a grain of salt. I really, I, I actually, actually genuinely like, feel that Thomas is just somebody whose show got really popular and he's trying everything and everything to keep that relevancy and then twitter is not the website for him because people on twitter are like they like clear cut straightforward answers and he just can't give you those answers because i feel deep down he's writing everything as he goes like he knows the general story he wants to tell but a lot of the things he does it on a whim because one minute oh chloe is gonna be redeemed next thing we know he hates chloe with a burning passion it doesn't make time sense. Travel in the mix, and you got a show. But then you yeah. also add, like, what ha What on earth happened to the alteration of their powers? I. What on earth? The space thing. That's one of the things. Like, I, I want to add into like something that we're gonna change in season two. They're gonna be able to touch on each, not just the ice and the water. They're gonna have episodes for each one of those alterations. The moon, the other ones that I don't remember. Well, we just don't know a lot of them. They only showed a few. Officially. Yeah, like, 
And wasn't there supposed to be an episode with a celebrity or something in season two? And it was just... Arnett's dress! Mm, yeah. That, that, that dress thing that people were so hyped about. It's gonna be in the Awakening was, I think that's for the movie. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was confirmed to be for the movie. Or at least Ma uh, Miraculous Mexico, I believe, said that that was for the movie. I remember uh, people this, were so hyped about it. Has, like, different... Oh, sorry, I'm bad. My bad. So, yeah, and then there is the... So, Adrian's family. Okay. I kind of like the timing of when they showed Chloe. Not Chloe, no, um, Emily. Emily? <laughs> but <laughs> I feel like they could have done more with that, with Emily as a whole. Even and clarity on what Emily is. Is she dead? Is she in a coma? I need answers. Cause maybe not right away, but like, yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure she's dead. I'm. I'm. I'm <laughs> she's in a coma. <laughs> Yeah, no, she's in a coma. She's in a coma? <laughs> okay, deep, I think yeah, definitely. Dead. I don't... If she was dead, she'd be decomposing by now. I don't think that glass case will keep flesh on a That's human after a year of death. Was. I Like, you know when he was freaking out over, like, I forget, it was in Party Crasher, when he was freaking out about the Oh, yeah, power? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I thought the I machine did, like, kept her body, like, preserved or something. That's what... <laughs> See, I think that was, that was actually the only thing there. that we learned from... The Stormy Weather 2 is that she wasn't dead, she was in a coma. <laughs> that was like okay. the biggest thing that we learned from that episode. The thing but is, they're making a comic about Emily and uh, Gabriel. And I'm scared right. that means they're not going to touch on it in the show. What? They better. I, I had no clue of this comic. <laughs> see, the news is just everywhere. Like, watch Cartoon Apocalypse. Or go on the Miraculous Lady by website, cause, I, like, I'm literally, it's the only place you'll be able to get it all. I don't even know if I want to read this comic because it's gonna be when Adrian was borderline imprisoned in his house, Not right but there. he's happy because his mom is still alive. Like, I don't know why the show just doesn't address that. Like, his mom just died last year. It's not like she's been dead for a while and his dad was like distant. It's like Adrian has been living this life constantly, but he was okay with it, but now he's not. Don't get it. I feel like I I don't know how to feel about Emily as a whole because there's a lot of speculation and I think the most the, uh, most question I have about her is why they were using the miraculous in the first place because yeah. I was I was thinking about it and then I remember them saying that the Miraculous are practically indestructible. And I was thinking, why Why the heck does he have... Like, well, how did this thing get break, like, broke if it like, was it's indestructible? indestructible? And so, I'm, I remember this point. We were talking about this earlier. And Aiden had mentioned it. Like, how very dangerous it is for an Akuma to go into a Miraculous. I wonder if that's a consequence of it. And then also, like, either that or Cataclysm was the only other two ways I could think of. Yeah, but an Okuma went damaged. into Chloe's Miraculous as well. And it's fine. Yeah, and then the thing is, if Emily died because she used the Miraculous, what on earth was her motivation? Yes. I don't, I don't know. For, but they the thing is, with the power. Monster. Yeah, what, it, like, what does Emily want to do with the Senti monster? She was an actor, for goodness sake. Married to a designer. Yeah. I keep seeing this theory on like Senti like Adrian being a Senti monster. I really doubt that's the case. Like I yeah, no, that does, that, no, I don't like that. If anything, <laughs> I would think it was Felix and not Adrian because no, they're literally identical either. twin. But like even that has little to no evidence on it. <laughs> Adrian is a so Senti monster. Just, no one's a Senti monster. That's no, one, yeah, no one's a Senti monster. <laughs> That, I Whenever I, I see that comment so many times, they're like, what do you think about Agent being a senti monster? And it annoys me because like it, it makes no He's sense. Uh, maybe <laughs> they just, think that I because respond to those. I feel like Adrian Adrian, you could prove me wrong, but I feel like he's too perfect. Like I don't know. What are his flaws? Well, I guess that's why he's Cat Noir, because Cat Noir is anything but perfect. 
it's the hot head he's reckless he's just yes. eager to do things so i guess that's why that's why i just love the dichotomy between adrian and cat noir but with Myrna and ladybug you can kind of make the connection that it's the same person but like adrian and cat noir are like two different human beings there was a point in the show where i was watching it and i completely forgot they were the same person yeah it's, i just it's, separated them if if um to get back on point if you could change one season of the show like out of all the three seasons we have right right now which season would you likely change the most aiden uh well that's a hard question if i change season one does that affect the rest of the seasons if, if you could tweak something which season would you tweak the most i don't know that's such a hard like what constitutes as tweaking like like adding just or like I changing think. a small little thing or like completely can I changing say, can the I entire say? season. Sure, okay, you, can you, go, go. you can go. I changed season two because that's when so many things are introduced. Like I feel like season th two was like the floor plan for so many things. So I I tweak some things about Gabriel's reveal, some things about the oh, yeah made that reveal so hype i was like who on planet earth is surprised by this <laughs> yeah i, wasn't there for that I think for me i think for me it would have to be season three i i love season Same. three but the way not only the Same. way the orders was released but just the i don't know it was like the filler episode that we had and it was just a lot going on in season three that could have been done so much better yeah 100 percent agree season three is my favorite and also least favorite season it had my favorite episodes star train oblivio um yes. kwami buster it has so many episodes i love but at the same time it frustrated me to no hell because it's like so many things could have been done better like who remembers bake bakerix like who remembers yeah. that episode? where dad i remember oh, that episode. but that one that i remember one where that it hurt that, where that hurt because they came after my ship like <laughs> season three felt like the season where things were happening but also the show was kind of like going against fan theories like where that was kind of destroying all the head cannons mary cat and shippers had i don't um, like where that anymore it shut down everything that would have fixed the show do you guys remember There's the random <laughs> christmas special i love that yeah christmas special I I don't care. I love that Christmas. No, not special. that. No, no, no. I'm saying in season three, they had a oh, random Christmas one Master. where oh. Nino's little brother, Chris Master. See oh, no. those. Are, okay, what about um, Puppeteer Two? I think that's literally the most hated episode <laughs> in the fan in the fandom because that episode should not have existed. It was there to I kind of put tension. But it was there to put tension between Adrian and Ed. But then it's like, okay, what's the point of the show? You destroyed Mary Cat. You destroyed Ladrian. That was what um, Desperada was for. I hated it. You destroyed... What was the... Well, most of season three was destroying the Lady Noir ship. And then... But tier two destroyed the Adrian Ed ship. So you're kind of just showing us that these two are not meant to be together. And then you introduce Kagami and Luca. And then the series fin season finale happened. And it's like... What are you trying to tell me? What's the point of all this? <laughs> and and then everything was aired out of order. Yeah. So it was even more frustrating. Like one episode you see Max with the horse miraculous and you're like, wait, wait, wait. When did that shit happen? Like, <laughs> And then on Netflix, they put it out of order as well on Netflix. For why? They, like Netflix has the opportunity to put it in order. But this... I guess the show is so popular that so many people are just eager to air it out as soon as possible because nobody wants to be like everybody wants to get that sweet sweet miraculous view because let's be honest it's really popular and so many people want to watch it but i would rather wait and get the episodes in order and i would too just it's <laughs> i can't even be properly frustrated and i feel like Thomas, no, i'm actually like... super frustrated about that because you know all they have to do in the contract because because um we know that the new contract for most of the world is is miraculous new episodes and specials are going to disney with with very few exceptions like china uh canada and brazil those are like the three big exceptions maybe there's another one in there 
Um, but other than that, it's all going to Disney. Disney just bought the rights out. So all they have to do in the contract is say, hey, look, when you're airing the episodes, just make sure you go in order. That's literally all they have to say in the contract. And then the like Disney would have to wait until they get the first episode of the season to air it. But they didn't put that in the contract. That's how simple it is to fix. But they just didn't do that. And it annoyed I me. I guess it's also a factor of it's not Disney's official property. So they don't care. But at the same time, Disney should want a property they're paying for to succeed. But it just feels right. like people don't care it's kind of like they're treating like a kid's show like nah who cares if episode six comes out before episode three and it's like we care we the 20 something year olds care right but the problem is is we are not the mass market which is why we don't see any of these issues that we think are big that's why none of it changes or, or has a fix to it because most yeah, people don't so care too. like like most kids don't care about watching something out of order because like, they're not I fully think my, comprehending my little it. sister doesn't care but if something happens i'm the one that has to explain it like my sisters are just coming like oh what happened and i'm like i don't know <laughs> they expect <laughs> me to have all the answers and it's so annoying <sighs> I, I think what frustrated me the most is that we had this year and a half gap before season exactly finally coming out and netflix did nothing that would have been the perfect opportunity to fix the order because nothing was coming out we had no information really we just knew that it was coming soon that would have been the perfect opportunity for so many of these airing platforms like disney netflix um what, whatever it's on at this point nickelodeon so i don't even know anymore um just to well, fix nickelodeon the order up the right of this but that's the thing hey, i think it was airing a long time ago but even then, wasn't it like Nickelodeon, but I guess it's the show because they were on Nickelodeon and then they went to Disney. But even on Nickelodeon, they aired the, I guess was it the finale was the first episode, I guess. I don't know if that was still like what? they did that on purpose or was the finale always supposed to be their origin story. That was never uh, cleared up. I think. Yeah. I'm not sure. I think some people thought that the origins was the finale, but it's not. It's not actually the finale. I don't think. I think that was supposed to be like episode twenty or something. So something. I don't remember. I feel like if we're if we're gonna change stuff, can we like it's just Jordan. change <laughs> Thomas as well? Like yes. Like I I I'd like I'd like us to <laughs> rewrite Thomas Astruck, um, because <laughs> okay. I feel like he shouldn't. You know, I know he just wants to be like good with the fandom. But him giving all this random information. He his Twitter account. That's just my <laughs> solution. There, who is the real creator of Miraculous? Because everyone, I feel like Thomas, like has no control about what is given away and what's not. Cause That's the thing between Thomas and Zach. Who's better? I'm sorry. Well, they have I, two I different. Have to say they have two completely different goals. Zag is is the the head of the company he wants he wants to give the more he wants to release a bunch of stuff for hype thomas does not thomas wants to have a better story as far as what he believes is a good story so he if it was up to thomas and how much information was released to the public there would be absolutely no news no things aside from new episode is airing this day we don't know anything about it we just know that there's an episode and actually i think he would rather have it all in bulk like like a netflix kind of thing to where it's just like, all right, new season's up. Like, that's all he would want. Because he hates spoilers. He hates information that's outside of... Because uh, he wants everyone to just experience I actually believe that's a better it. model. I actually believe that's a better model. Because Miraculous is a show that I feel should be released. Like, it can work weekly. Let it be... Not like WandaVision. Like, five episodes released at a time. Like, a Steven Bomb. Even though Cartoon Network kind of ran that idea into the ground. But Miraculous is a show that should be released in chunks. Like, every arc should be released like five episodes at a time arc. because i guess they don't have arcs they have singular episode arcs arc. they only have like two arcs we had an arc she had what, three what episodes had. <laughs> yeah whatever arc a quote-unquote arc sure <laughs> but yeah it should be like five episodes at a time like i think a season is 20 25 episodes so maybe every two months or so or a month just release a block of episodes and i and that would be wonderful that would solve all the episode problems because at least when episode continuities when episodes are aired out of order it's not more than three episodes ahead but i can't remember was it season two i think it was season three that was a nightmare for episode release like episodes were released 
out of i still don't know the three. proper air dates of season three because felix came out and then shot blah and then another one and i'm like i don't know I which believe, one like, is the, supposed to come the first came out really early on before like the last two episodes came out too so season three yeah. is just a dumpster fire <laughs> Okay, so yeah, the finale came out in Ukraine, and then Cat Blanc came out, and then Felix was the final Felix episode to air. Yeah, yeah. Aiden, you, your, your, um, your brain's memory is too much for all of us. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, don't, I don't know about that, but the, like I you just... have the the miraculous of memory at this point. He well, I've sort of forgotten of over the hiatus. I've just sort of forgotten like everything that well I knew I remember some of the news but as far as the episodes go I completely forgot I need to rewatch the show really badly um cuz I just forgot everything is it, is it bad that I don't want to rewatch the show <sighs> I I I That's don't how I, feel. I don't blame I feel you sometimes. if because I wanted to rewatch it I'm just going to get like I'm just going to make this like, like uh I just watched the best <laughs> one that's it. I skip over like Puppeteer 2. Every time I watch that, I sit down and I try to watch it with the most straight face. I can't. I, I really Puppeteer can't. 2 is funny though. I really like that. That was funny. I just can't watch it. It's just hurt. funny. It hurt. You it think we hurt. need funny right now, Aiden? <laughs> funny. Yeah. I, like, I like funny episodes. Yeah. I liked season one a lot because of the I interaction between episodes. Ladybug and Cat Noir. I found that enjoyable. Yeah. Season so one is really two, rewatchable. It was another level. I just couldn't. I but just, I think I some episodes. I just couldn't deal with her in that episode. I really I can't. Wait. That's the thing. Season one is rewatchable. Season two is manageable. But I cannot see myself sitting down and rewatching any season three episode because really? it felt like a job to watch them. Like. I there, there may be some one or two that I can play back, but a lot of them it's so it's just painful to watch. Them. Okay, I, don't, I can't describe it. From season three, personally, I enjoyed Oblivio. I enjoyed um. Uh, open my computer and see what episodes Ladybug, I actually enjoyed from this season. Feast. Look up the list. Kwame Buster. That was a pretty good one. Heart Hunter, yeah. Miracle Queen, and Cat Blanc. Did you say Ladybug? I don't remember if you said Ladybug. Yeah, Ladybug, Ladybug. That was a good oh, one. Oh, yeah, that was the one with Mayura. They could have had yeah, so was much favorite. Mayura. Wasn't Mayura supposed to be Hawk Moth's boss? Yeah, she was supposed That's to be like the big bad. <laughs> okay. We have to there rewrite the Miraculous Final. team. That was fine. There was Reflect Doll. I really like that one. Mm -hmm. Time Tiger, I think I, ha I haven't rewatched it. Time Tiger, um, that's one with Bunnix, right? Yeah. I haven't seen that one again since the first time. time Baker as well. Haven't rewatched it. Party Crasher was fun. Annoying, but fun. That was one that was extremely out of order. It felt very rushed to me. Which one? All of them. Party Crasher. Yeah. Pretty much. L they're just having a party. Then this random background character. What's his name? Emmanuel. I don't Wait, know. Wait, oh, yeah. how, how do you remember? I, 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 no, no, there's somebody in my comments every almost every video. They're like, Wayam should get the dog miraculous. She oh, is obsessed who is Wayam? Like, who is he? Like, <laughs> that is laughing. Do you know this person? Do you does she comment on your videos? Too? No, no, I don't know them. <laughs> no, That's like funny. on my Twitter, in my Discord, in my video, she loves Wayam so much. And because of her, I've memorized him and, and she's like, she will literally assault you if you give anybody else the dog miraculous. And I said, What of Sabrina? She's like, No, <laughs> Sabrina can't have it. It's Wayam's. <laughs> I respect how like, much okay, then. TVC reads all her comments. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 a chore, but I, I like it and I can remember a lot of comments I receive so I'm I know what the fandom wants and they are weird. Would you guys <laughs> keep Adrian the same? Uh. It's the it's the it's the obliviousness for me and it's not because like he has a very <laughs> Okay, listen to okay. This is why this is why I'm saying this because his obliviousness makes sense. With his background, with his character, he's been locked up his entire life. It makes sense. He doesn't know how to interact with people. That's fair. But the way they push it, the way they That's... push it in the episode makes it unrealistic. And I just don't like it. I would tone that down a little bit. Yes. Just a little bit. Speaking of the puppeteer, too. Adrian is smart. Like, like... Don't forget that. 
yeah, like Marinette's like, Adrian, I love you so much. And she's about to kiss the wax figure. And then he's just, at the end of the episode, I didn't know what happens. Somehow he's like hypnotized and he's like, Marinette, Marinette, it's okay. I understand. So we're joking like too. We were all joking. You're into statues, aren't you? That, God, I don't even like remembering it. I, I feel pain. Not even secondhand that embarrassment, straight pain. Is it, they push it too much for me, so I would definitely tone that down. But I think everything else is fine with Adrian. I, I feel like it's fine. His relationship with Flag is amazing, and like his background, like is the most interesting in the story. So other than that, I don't think I would really change anything about him. Like I said, Adrian is smart, and he should have figured out Marinette's identity a long time ago, but the show kind of dumbs him down on purpose. I think that Adrian should have a role. Right now, he's just sort of yeah, like there. Uh, and, and but he should actually be treated like an equal to Ladybug. Yeah, I want an ev I feel like um, I sometimes, like, um, Cat Noir should be the one who, who like, saves the day, like, at the end, or, like, and sometimes Ladybug. Make him more there balanced. shouldn't be a main character it should be equal right. that's yeah, the point yeah it's it's, it's, it's there's supposed to yeah, be actually, a yin and true. yang and so far it just seems like ladybug's there and then Kent noir is just you know it's, like it's, it's, i'm here it's, too don't forget it's, about me it's miraculous tales of ladybug and cat noir. noir yes yeah and it's, when the fandom points that out oh my god you're misogynist you don't you don't you can't understand or handle a woman being a leader i wanted yeah, the, to slap <laughs> thomas for that not, what do you guys think of Gabriel? What do you th what are what do you think we can redo with Gabriel? He's just dumb. Make him smarter. <laughs> but all his plans are up against teenagers. Make him smart him because he's literally the, going against. Fortune. But the problem is that's not a Gabriel problem. That's the writing team problem. Like he should be more creative and not just have the same villains go after people who have taken him out. Like. Well, Pigeon? no, it's, really? I, don't, I would disagree with that. I don't times? think it's a writing problem. They have to dumb him down. Otherwise, he would just absolutely demolish them. Like, <laughs> they don't have a choice. But like, the only all problem the is that when he akumatizes people, it's the same outfit and almost the same powers. And it's like, why are you sending the same villain after heroes who have already defeated them? Like, yeah. we've seen Lady Wi-Fi how many times now? And we're still gonna see her in the new season because I think I saw trailers of I don't her. Know that annoys me a lot. Again, that's not a Gabriel problem. That's the writing crew problem. Okay, yes, and that is a writer problem. So, Gabriel, for what he is, he's fine. He's like a grieving widow, quote-unquote, who is not seeing rationale. And he's just trying to take down teenagers who he doesn't know are teenagers. So, of course, he's not going to think he things know they're teenagers, through. He's a he fashion does. designer. He literally says they're kids. Yeah. He, he knows they're teenagers somehow. Okay, okay. But even even well, if that's the case, he still should feel bad. Yeah. Oh, I, I remember that episode in season one, the Egypt episode, where Ladybug tried to say oh, she was, like, Farrah? really old, and Adrian was like, you're not a day over 10,000 or whatever. Yeah. So they were trying to yeah. put up the fact that you don't know our ages, but then the Kwame Buster episode happened, and again, they were trying to reinforce, hey, we're not from this school. So I guess they're trying to play off as adults. But I have one thing I will replace about Gabriel. I just remembered. The episode Chat Blah when he found out Adrian was Cat Noir and attacked him. That destroyed Gabriel's character. Because we knew the one thing he'd give up hunting the miraculouses for is his son. And to have him blatantly go after his son without hesitation in that episode just came out of left field. But here's the thing they say it's a slow burn and i'm like no it's not it's like the show is trying to invent fire it's it's not going anywhere nothing is happening throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks that's why i said let 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 lila trick adrian and let them go on a date let something happen i came here for romance i could give less of a shit about what gabriel is up to i came here for two idiots to <laughs> fall in love when is that gonna happen? Yeah. It's like, if, okay, I love the romance portion of it, but I also love Hawkmar. Like, if you gotta pick which one are you gonna focus on? Cause what romance? There's no oh, romance. Yeah, the only romantic scene was Oblivio. <laughs> and that got memorized. And they took that away from us. 
show really wants us to know Marinette is smart and creative. Do you know it, she's into fashion? They should be going along this journey at the same time as a team. Not Ladybug taking the lead and then Cat Noir is just sort of there. What I would have liked to see is Adrian's side peek out a little bit more there. Um, cause that, that was dealing more with emotions, right? So I, I think it would be better if, if Adrian was like, man, I realize that Ladybug's been keeping secrets from me. I would like to see him, yeah. um, be like a little bit Love. depressed and then Ladybug would have to notice that and be like, you just trust Ladybug. Let there just be some, a little bit of distrust. Like, okay, why is she keeping secrets from you? We're supposed to be partners. So I agree with right. you there. He should be hesitant, not just blindly follow this woman through anything like yeah we know you trust her but yeah and maybe after that episode it's not their, their memories aren't going to be erased we're actually going to see marinette like bringing cat noir into things more like not just being like not just them forgetting that it happens you know <laughs> they still have so much powers and characters and love troubles to do but they don't have enough villains to do it and <laughs> season yeah. two should have been the Season two should have been the season where everybody got miraculouses. Like, yeah, every episode right, let just yeah. a new classmate get a miraculous. And then season three would show them struggling with those heroes and then taking the powers away in the end because Gabriel found out. But I guess one of the big hindrances of the show is they are unable to have an episode without a villain. So if we were rewriting the show, would we have episodes that solely focus on Marinette and Adrian's relationship? Or do we have a fight Heck every yeah. episode? Heck yeah, 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 yeah. We, we don't need... I feel like... If the the battle between the villains they take up a good majority of the episode and it leaves like so little room for improvements after it yeah and so. the impact for the battles is so much less because like like everyone's just like oh yeah they're just gonna fight they're just gonna like you wrapped know, up gonna beat into, the like, villain like oh, always we, we and stormy weather the too was even a good example the villain fight was like two minutes you, you know like the yeah, episode cool. let, let me go to season two what was the episode called, called? Dark Owl. I liked how that one just, it was the way, they, they weren't just fighting, fighting, you know? It was yeah, different. Yeah, that one was a good episode. That was, like... That was one of my favorite episodes. Yeah, they were fighting, like, but the thing is, they were able to do it in a way that made it more interesting and added more to it, you know? Uh, yeah, I think all I think all of the characters should be getting Miraculouses sooner. Um, so, did Volpina happen before we give Alia a Miraculous, or...? Why does I think Volpina should introduce uh, uh the new miraculous? I think I yeah, think because that is when we should we should hero? see Reno Rouge is with Volpina. Then we can have some people were like, oh, we should. It would be really cool to see a fight between Volpina and Reno Rouge. I, it, it wouldn't be an interesting fight uh, yeah. because they both <laughs> have the same power, and the power is to create illusions. And if they both know that their power is to create illusions, they're pretty much powerless. So then it just turns into a fist fight. But either way, I think it'd be cool right. to see Ladybug, Ken Noir, and Rena Rouge go up against Volpina. That that could be interesting. And then maybe it would be cool if they don't, if like Ladybug and Ken Noir don't realize that their power is illusions. So then they're like, all right. We got to go figure out what this what this power is because she's she's emulating a power, right? So then, if we can figure out by getting that power on our side, then we can figure out how to defeat it. And that's that that's really interesting. Point. Like, what if Master Fu, instead of like hand feeding you information, he gives you the miraculous and he's like, figure it out. Yeah, it's kind of shitty, but it's fun. The fandom can kind of try and piece together before the heroes do. Okay, what is the turtle miraculous's power? Our, in our universe, we should have Hawk Moth be evil, but he's not willing to go too far. So he's constantly stopping himself from... Like, he could get the Miraculouses, but something keeps stopping him. Like a conscience or whatever. That's the only way I can see us realistically making Gabriel be beat by these heroes. Because deep down, he doesn't want to win. He doesn't want to go to these lengths because he knows his wife will be disappointed in him. But he keeps forcing himself to do so because he's just miserable without her. I guess that just makes him a sympathetic villain people have a reason right, to like yeah. him and i want to see a flashback just a flashback of maybe the day that um emily got was in her coma or something any flashback see, just just to give us something that. like when they first found the miraculous like how they found it i think that would come a little it. later 
I like, think something in that line, like a whole episode, just like what happened in this family that got it to the point where it is. When when the family was happy, Adrian didn't mind being a locked up prisoner in his own home. Oh my god. Though we should have a reason as to why he was locked up in the first place. How would you do the reveal? Well, that's actually I wanted want to be as anticlimactic as possible. I want an umbrella scene, but I want it to make me cry, but because of how simple it is. Really? The way I wanted the the way I'm hoping this this like finale goes is that they do a, Okay, have you ever seen those comics where they straight up like get together right after the reveal? And like no I don't I don't like that idea of it. Like I don't like them like confessing especially if they don't fall for the other side of each other because like we that's were saying, true Jaguar is different from adrian and marinette is different from Lena, yeah that's kind of messed up sense. like you only it's, it's a messed up yeah it's a mess up plot line so i feel as if if that's how they're going to go about it and they don't want them to have like marisha or ladrian then have them not get together as soon as they reveal have them have a break have them have a a period of time where they're contemplating what the heck just happened like how do they feel about one another but maybe it's a dire situation with hawk Moss where they have to reveal their identities otherwise they would lose so they have to go against the teachings that master fu gave them because let's be honest he's kind of a shitty teacher he's doing his best mm-hmm. but okay so they have to go against that they have to do things their way to defeat hawk Moth once and for all because they can't keep going in circles and revealing their identities would help that or it could just be like a soft little scene after everything maybe lila gets the miraculous and there's a new villain and they're like okay we're not gonna go through all this again and keep our identities hidden and they just reveal it in the most simple way possible so, that's yeah, do you think be... instead of just marinette being the guardian it would be marinette and adrian they're like the guardians that i would I, like that that would, would be, like that, that would be too, great but that's the only part where I'll concede. Let Marinette be the guardian of the Kwamis. If the show was equal, I would agree because Adrian would be like, "Okay, take my Kwamis. I trust you." But then some people could say, "Oh, Adrian is dumping his responsibilities on her." But yeah, Adrian has no privacy in his own home, so he literally couldn't keep the Kwamis even if he wanted to. At least they should have given him the options to have some. The review should just be god i just remember star versus that's how the review should be in a life or death situation but star versus kind of like put a pause on all the action and said okay but anyway they just told each other they loved each other okay back to the action yeah 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 i told aiden this he didn't like the idea i said let the finale be that the kwamis are free from the miraculouses like they can just exist they're not dead they can yeah, maybe like inhabit that. <laughs> they didn't have it owners, yeah so yeah i saw I, the, uh, in a discussion right they kind of like give up the powers of the miraculous or set the copies free so hawk moth can never get a hold of them this is in the lab like the <laughs> so, so so they set the copies free and like they just transform back that would be so extra and i love it and they would have like a full-on in- like army of they do that they don't. on one hand they I'd do like, that I'd they like also know who hawk moth identity but... is they they, they, they co- marinette marinette unifies the miraculous and she's like my wish is that the kwamis never existed and the whole show resets itself uh, and we go back to episode <laughs> one i kind of want to show oh, no. itself, but this is but not like not necessarily like that i don't I really do want the show to reset itself just to the fact that we see how it would have progressed normally if the superhero aspect wasn't a part of it. That's the thing. If the show ends, Marinette has to give up her memories because she's the new guardian. And do you want the show to end that way with like old lady Marinette forgetting everybody? Or will the show try and say, oh, the power of love will bring her memories back because no, Master Fu is going to be no. brought back for... Lose her memories. I'm sorry. Wait, you're look, evil look. you're all evil I, look, look, i'd rather look. have a reset than a memory loss I rather, i'm not going through oblivion again <laughs> i i like the point of sacrifice and i like that 
I agree. The aspect of it that Marinette loses her memory on it, but I oh, like, I like the idea of reset because it doesn't require them to like have to retell everything to her. It's just that it resets. Reset seems like the easy way out. That's the lazy. Yeah, like, yeah, it, loses it, her it depends on whether you want her to suffer or you want us to. Makes to everybody lose their memories. <laughs> everybody. But that's the thing. The reset is. Yeah, the reason is everybody loses their memories and in this one is only marinette because master fu is coming back as we know in episode season one episode season four episode one and it's like okay how did he get acclimatized because he yeah. doesn't have his memories so something happened if something must have been said so he might have gotten his memories back or something but if i was to redo this show and marinette loses her memories i would absolutely make her remember it through the power of love that would be how the reveal happens she loses her memories she loses ladybug yeah it, it, everything even though it's cheesy it works with the story like it'll make people cry for sure adrian will. trying to jumpstart her memory it's kind of like with people gravity falls like i'm just imagining Uncle Stan got his oh yeah wife. yeah yeah remember like um cry marinette like the audacity redo everything god damn it it's so <sighs> annoying yeah me- like i'm thinking marinette like sacrifices herself and she reveals herself first and then like and cat Ka- like marinette and then like he- like you know he reveals himself to her and she's like adrian it's you and, and then I remember. And-, and then adrian and adrian's like y- you're ladybug she no, stops that, that's, like, so, that's so far out in the future. They're not even going to touch on that in the show, I don't think. So we don't have to worry about that. I, yeah. think, I hope they do, honestly. I want to see what happens. So in general, yeah, we've been here for a while. Miraculous is a good show. <laughs> like, it's fine. I think personally, I have a love hate relationship with Miraculous. I agree. We all do. Yeah, it's, it's a good premise. And. It has. It has a lot of potential. It has a the lot of good. potential. The story is good. The execution not super great, but yeah, I like the characters and the idea behind it, so I still like it. And there's a couple things that could definitely be improved on, but yeah, yeah, that was our thoughts on how we'd rewrite *Miraculous Ladybug*. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Aiden, TVC, and Mia. And we'll see you next time. Bye.